Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul, I'm with the Dicey Review, and tonight we're going to be learning how to play the 1-6 to six player game Dungeon Academy, being released by the OP. Dungeon Academy comes with all of the components that you see here, including 150 adventure sheets, one cardboard dungeon, 16 basic dice, a labyrinth and boss die, one teacher standee, 10 hero cards, 20 loot cards, 6 exit cards, and 158 double-sided energy tokens. Before the first game, players will have to construct the dungeon out of the supplied cardboard pieces. The directions for that are in the first page of the rulebook. To begin setup, place the dungeon in the center of the table. Next, shuffle the loot cards and place them within easy reach. Also place the teacher and the 16 room dice within easy reach. Next, stack the escape cards so that 6 is on the bottom and 1 is on the top, near the play area. Then, randomly draw a character card for each player at the table. If you want to, you can also pick your favorite character when doing this step. Make sure and create a pool of double-sided health and mana tokens somewhere near the play area where all players can reach it easily. Then place tokens on all the empty spaces on the side of your character card where there's room for mana tokens and health tokens. Then each player should get an adventure sheet along with a pen or pencil which is not included in the game. For the first game, it's recommended that you don't use the boss or the labyrinth die, so those can stay in the box for now. After this has been done, you're ready to play. In a game of Dungeon Academy, you'll play for a total of four rounds. And in each round, you'll be exploring a level of the dungeon represented by these four grids on your adventure sheet. So in round one, you'll only draw in these squares. In round two, you'll draw in these squares. Three and four, you'll draw in these squares. And each round of Dungeon Academy will follow the same five steps. The first step is to set the exam length for the round that you're playing. There are three different time limits that you can select based on if you want to play an easy, moderate, or hard level. To track this, you can either use a timer that you have access to, or you can download the Dungeon Academy Timer app. Let's say that we're going to select the normal or moderate difficulty. Then prepare the dungeon. You can do this by rolling all 16 of the room dice in the upside down roof of the dungeon. After you've done that, place the floor of the dungeon underneath the roof of the dungeon, and then turn the dungeon over. Don't lift the roof just yet, but know that this has now created a 16-room dungeon that you'll have to navigate in the next phase of the round. Then, once everyone's ready, start the timer app, and then reveal the lid to the dungeon. Once the dungeon is revealed, each player has to draw a path through the dungeon to fight monsters and collect potions in the time limit chosen. So for instance, both of these players have 45 seconds to draw a path through the dungeon. When you're drawing a path through the dungeon, you draw it from your perspective, wherever you happen to be sitting. So for instance, if this player wanted to start in this tile of the dungeon, they would begin by drawing their path here. And when drawing a path through the dungeon, there are a few rules you have to follow. You have to start and end your path on one of the dungeon's outer rooms, and you can never move diagonally within the dungeon, and you also can't move through the same room twice. So for instance, after drawing their path through the dungeon, this player's path might look something like this. And as soon as a player has finished their path through the dungeon, they'll grab the first available exit card. Once everyone has either taken an exit card or the timer is run out, it's time to resolve the level of the dungeon. Beginning with the player who collected the level 1 exit card, each player will start to resolve the dungeon. The player to the left of this player will collect the teacher standee, and resolve the dungeon following the arrows drawn on the player's adventure sheet. When you're resolving rooms through the dungeon, you'll either use or gain health or mana depending on what the symbol on the die shows. If you move through a room with a small monster indicated by these smaller symbols here, you have to spend one health or mana to defeat that monster and progress through the room. So for instance, by moving through this room, the player would have to spend one red health marker and they would defeat that monster. They would indicate this by placing the one red health marker in the box at the top of their adventure sheet, showing that monster's symbol. In a similar way, if the player moved through this room, showing the small blue monster, they would have to spend one mana instead of one health to defeat that monster and progress through the room. If a player moves through a room showing a red or a blue potion symbol, 
they would gain one of that resource, either health or mana, by taking it from the supply and placing it on their player sheet. It's important to note that if you move through a potion room and your stats are already full, nothing happens. If a player moves through a room showing a big monster indicated by this larger monster symbol, a player would have to spend two mana or two health to defeat that monster and progress through the room. So for instance, when moving through this space, this player would have to spend two blue mana symbols and the monster would then be defeated. They could indicate this by placing one of the mana symbols spent in this box showing they've defeated one of that monster. The other token would go back to the supply. If a player is able to fully complete their path without losing all of their health or all of their mana, they've completed that level and then they'll be able to tally points on their adventure sheet. It's also important to note that some characters have special abilities that they can use during a dungeon's resolution. For instance, the wizard has an ability that says once per level, they can defeat a large blue monster for free. So in their dungeon resolution, their first step is facing a large blue monster. If they wanted to, they would simply be able to gain credit for defeating that monster without losing any mana. They can only do that once per level though. Then for each player who manages to exit the level in time, they would be able to score points based on the tokens on their adventure sheet. A player would score one point for each token showing they've defeated a monster, regardless of that monster's size. So for instance, this player for their level one score over on monsters would write four points. There could also be loot cards or player character abilities that increase the points you get for each round, depending on if you meet the requirements of the card. For instance, if the player had this particular loot card, they would gain one extra point for each small blue monster they defeat. Any points gained from cards like this or character abilities can be notated here. Players can also notate how much health and mana they have at the end of each round so they don't lose track. After players have recorded any points that they gain from resolving the dungeon, each player who completed the dungeon would also get to select one quest to achieve, which will unlock bonus points at the end of the current round. Each quest can only be selected once per game, and they all work in a similar fashion. This quest would give you one point for each red monster you defeat, regardless of its size. This quest works the same way, but with blue monsters. This quest would give you one point for each small monster you defeat, regardless of color. And this quest would give you one point for each large monster you defeat, regardless of color. In our example, we'll say that this player will choose to activate their small monster bonus for a total of three points. They would gain three points because they've defeated three small monsters. Now that they've activated this quest, it can't be resolved for the rest of the game for this player. If a player ever needs to move through a room and that particular encounter would deplete their resource of that type, that's perfectly fine as long as they have enough resources to pay for that one encounter. If, however, a player moves through a room and they don't have enough resources to fully defeat that monster, for instance, this player would need two red tokens to defeat that monster and they only have one, they would then be knocked out and they wouldn't be able to score anything for that particular level of the dungeon. It's important to note that if a player ever fails a level by not making it to the exit in time, dropping below zero on their health or mana points, or breaking one of the movement rules laid out during the reveal dungeon phase, they wouldn't score any points for the particular level, be able to complete a quest, or gain any loot but they would fully recover all of their mana and their health and be able to compete fully in the next level. After any player who's completed a level scores their points and gains a reward for any quest that they've chosen, they would then earn a loot card. Players will draw as many loot cards as there are players. Then in numerical order, starting with the first player who grabbed the exit card, each player would get to select one loot card to keep. Loot cards can provide a number of different benefits and abilities throughout the game. There are one-time use loot cards that you can use to just gain a one-time benefit. There are loot cards that will give you an ongoing bonus for the rest of the game. And there are loot cards that have to be used during the very next level of the game if selected. There are even loot cards that will give you bonus points or bonus benefits at the end of the game. And there are some loot cards that will give you a one-time ability that you can use once per round, similar to a player ability. This symbol here indicates that it can only be used once per round. More details on loot cards can be found in the back of the rulebook. After every player has chosen a loot card, if there are any remaining, they would be discarded. And then each player would reset their adventure sheet. This would be done by first discarding any tokens that are left on your adventure sheet. And unless you have a special power that says otherwise, no health or mana will be gained in between rounds, unless you failed the level, in which case you would recover fully. After players have reset their adventure sheet, they're ready to move on to the next level and repeat the same five steps, preparing the dungeon, revealing and resolving the dungeon, until all four levels have been completed. After all four levels have been completed, players will add up all of the points written on each of their spaces in the different levels, 
all of the points for any of their quests that they've completed, and any in-game points given by their character or ability cards that they've gained during the game can be notated here. The player with the most points would be the winner, and if there's a tie for first place, the winner is the player who exited the last level the fastest. There are a few variants that can be included to change gameplay slightly depending on if you want a harder or a less difficult game, and there are also labyrinth and boss dice that can be included as well. I'll explain quickly the way that these dice work. During the final step of each phase where you're resetting your adventure sheet, you can choose to play with the labyrinth die and the boss die. At the start of level 2, you would replace one of the normal dice with the labyrinth die, and at the start of the fourth level, you would replace one of the dice with the boss die. These dice work in the exact same way as the normal dice, their rooms in the dungeon that you have to move through and resolve. But they provide unique challenges that the players have to overcome. If one of the faces of the labyrinth die shows one of the corridor symbols, which can look like this, this, or this, players aren't able to move through the sides of the walls with the thick border. If players have to move through the side showing the banana peel, they would lose one point. And if they move through the side showing the purse, they would gain one point. The boss die works in a similar fashion. If a player moves through a room showing the troll symbol, they would have to spend three health to defeat it, but they would gain three points and regenerate all of their health. If they move through a room showing the lich symbol, they would have to spend three mana to defeat it, but would gain three points and would regenerate all of their mana. If they move through a room with the dragon, they have to spend three health and three mana to defeat it, but they would gain three points and then regenerate all of their health and their mana. If they move through a chest room, they would gain two points, if they see the dead end symbol, they can't move through this room. And if they see the key symbol, they have to move through this room to be able to exit the dungeon. They would have to collect the key before they could get out. All right, everybody, that was our video. Thanks so much for watching. We hope that it was helpful and we hope that it was informative. If you still have any questions about how to play the game, please comment below or email us directly at thedicereview at gmail.com. You can connect with us on social media and make sure and connect with us at our Board Game Geek Guild. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.